Hey, and welcome to a new episode of Muscle for Life. I'm Mike Matthews. Thank you for joining me today. And quickly, if you like what I'm doing here on the podcast, and you want to make sure that you don't miss future episodes, go ahead and subscribe to the show in whatever app you are listening in, because then you will be notified. I guess it depends on the app. They don't all notify you, but you will not miss episodes because the app will automatically download every new episode and cue them up for you to go through and check out. And also, if you subscribe, it's going to help me because it boosts the ranking of the show and therefore makes it easier for more people to find me and my work. Okay, so this episode is a success story. This episode is an interview I did with Todd, who read my book, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and used what he learned to go from over 230 pounds down to 175 pounds and about 10% body fat. And of course, he gained a bunch of muscle and strength along the way and is now in the best shape of his life. And before finding me and my work, Todd was overweight, uh, he was unhealthy, he wanted to get in shape, so he started intermittent fasting because he heard that is the key. But he didn't understand energy balance, he didn't understand macronutrient balance, and so of course Todd ended up stuck in a rut, and then COVID hit, he got very sick, and he realized that he needed to make a real change, a permanent change. and. He found me, he found Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and it made a lot of sense to him. He started to implement what he learned in the book, started to see real and consistent results for the first time, and just kept going. And the rest is history, as they say. And so in this episode, you are going to hear from Todd and you're going to hear his story. You're going to hear some of the lessons he has learned along the way. Uh, He shares some of the tactics, some of the dietary tactics and training tactics that have helped him stay consistent and enjoy the process. And so if you are in the middle of your own transformation, or if you are just about to get started, I think you're going to find this interview enlightening and motivating. Also, if you like what I'm doing here on the podcast and elsewhere, definitely check out my VIP one-on-one coaching service because my team and I have helped people of all ages and all circumstances lose fat, build muscle, and get into the best shape of their life faster than they ever thought possible. And we can do the same for you. We make getting fitter, leaner, and stronger paint by numbers simple by carefully managing every aspect of your training and your diet for you. Basically, we take out all of the guesswork, so all you have to do is follow the plan and watch your body change day after day, week after week, and month after month. What's more, we've found that people are often missing just one or two crucial pieces of the puzzle. And I'd bet a shiny shekel it's the same with you. You're probably doing a lot of things right, but dollars to donuts, there's something you're not doing correctly or at all that's giving you the most grief. Maybe it's your calories or your macros. Maybe it's your exercise selection. Maybe it's your food choices. Maybe you're not progressively overloading your muscles or maybe it's something else. And whatever it is, Here's what's important. Once you identify those one or two things you're missing, once you figure it out, that's when everything finally clicks. That's when you start making serious progress. And that's exactly what we do for our clients. To learn more, head over to www.buylegion.com. That's B-U-Y-Legion.com slash VIP and schedule your free consultation call, which by the way, is not a high pressure sales call. It's really just a discovery call where we get to know you better and see if you're a good fit for the service. And if you're not for any reason, we will be able to share resources that'll point you in the right direction. So again, if you appreciate my work and if you want to see more of it, and if you also want to finally stop spinning your wheels and make more progress in the next few months than you did in the last few years, check out my VIP coaching service at www.buylegion.com slash VIP. Hey, Todd. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, man. Uh, we've, We've successfully started to record this podcast for people listening. We we had a couple of misfires uh, on, uh, they were probably, I don't remember exactly, probably my fault, but uh, here we are. And I'm excited to to talk to you. 
Yeah, yeah. Our uh, commingled busy schedules have finally uh, uh, come together. Yeah, our stars have aligned. Uh, so I, I like to I like to start these conversations with a quick kind of before and after snapshot just to grab people's attention, really. Um, so could you tell us quickly where you were at before uh, you uh, found me and found my work and before you you really started to take your fitness seriously, I guess you could say, and then where are you at today? And, and you could talk about yeah. whatever is most meaningful to you. For some people, it's it's pretty straightforward. They're just like, you know, I, I wasn't in shape and I was a bit overweight and I, I, I lost the, the excess fat and I built some muscle. Now I'm in great shape. And for other people, um, there is that, but sometimes there are other factors as well that have more weight, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can give you a quick. There, there's a, a sort of an image that I think of. It's that an actual photo, but I I think of some pictures that were taken at my my daughter Taylor's baptism in 2017. Uh, I was about 265, probably I mean 30 percent plus body fat. I was I was big. Um, you know, waist was coming in at, at probably 46. Uh, I was a, I was a big boy, but you know I, I was I've always been a, a larger guy. Um, my whole life I've been you know overweight to some extent. Uh, it, it was only just in the past probably you know five years uh, and really just a couple of years after I had kids that uh, that things just kind of started spiraling out of control. Um, and I, I I think of that image in, in 2017 as just kind of like you know, a really embarrassing self, uh, judgment, right. I, I see it on Facebook from time to time. We have this little picture in our living room that, that cascades through, uh, you know, family pictures and things like that. And it comes up and I'm just like, Oh man, <laughs> we've come a long ways. Uh, and, and so I, I, I think of that, you know, 2017, uh, and nothing really changed. I think that, you know, seeing those pictures, uh, afterwards, you know, maybe in 2018, I, I tried to, uh, a couple different diets. I tried intermittent fasting. Um, I had read a bunch of articles online and, and made some attempts to change, uh, but, but was unsuccessful um, for a couple of years. And I mean, really, my, that's kind of a, the saga of my whole life is I really just have never been able to hone in my, my own personal fitness. And it, um, it's a depressing thing for anyone who's ever, uh, you know, gone through their whole life like that. Just, you know, always feeling kind of overweight, not really reaching any kind of potential and, and just really not knowing what it's like to be healthy. Uh, that, that was definitely, definitely my story. Um, and then uh, really what, what occurred and, and well, I'll fast forward to today, give you a glimpse of what, you know, what the kind of metrics are now. I'm uh, 178 pounds, uh, not sure the exact body fat percentage, but um, you know, floating around 10, 11, 12, 13%, somewhere in there, it goes up and down. Um, and, uh, feeling really good, feeling a lot healthier. Uh, I feel like my thought processes are, are more clear. I, I feel that, uh, I've got a lot more control over, over my, uh, my eating habits and my, my, uh, fitness routine. And, and so it's, uh, it wasn't easy, easy, but I, I certainly have come a long way. Um, so if you'd like, I, I can jump into kind of the, you know, what was the catalyst and, and kind of, you know, uh, what, what catapulted me to, to make this huge change. If, uh, if you'd like, I can kind of walk through that. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to hear it. Yeah. So really what transpired was, you know, like I said, going into 2020, 2019, 2020, uh, you know, kids are growing up, we're growing our family, uh, kind of progressing into the career. I, I happen to be in a, uh, a line of business that requires that I travel quite a bit. And, uh, the first part of 2020, you know, it's sort of on the precipice of, uh, of the global pandemic. You know, it's early uh, January, February. No one really knows what's about to hit them, but uh, I was on a business trip in Seattle, uh, just sort of going, going about my normal routine, uh, meeting out with clients, going to lunches, driving around town, taking Ubers, doing this, doing that, uh, you know, just, just sort of operating business as usual. Uh, on the night before I was uh, to come home, and I sort of had a, I felt like I was maybe coming down with a, you know, a head cold or something uh, coming up to the, the last night. But uh, night before my flight to, to come home, I just have, I, I wake up in the middle of the night, cold sweat, 
the best way to describe it, and I tell other people, it was like a, an asthma-induced stroke. <laughs> or some. It, it felt like I was going in and out of consciousness, just really in a bad state of mind. Uh, I couldn't breathe. I thought I was dying. And if you've ever felt like that or, or gone through an experience like that, it's terrifying. It's absolutely and utterly terrifying. And uh, so, you know, I, long story short, I, I, you know, 10, 12 hours straight of just, you know, heaving in my hotel room. I feel terrible for, you know, whatever poor soul had to come in and, and uh, get exposed to whatever I had. Who knows if it was COVID or something else, but whatever it was. Uh, so, sounds uh, uh, COVID-esque, that's for sure, as far as the symptoms go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, like I, I was sort of telling you, it's, I haven't gone to, to prove whether I've had COVID or not. I, I think it's a fair assumption that that was probably, it was one of the early cases in 2020. Yep. And so looking back, thinking about sort of how things transpired, it, it was one of those moments in time in my life that I just, I, I looked at, okay, so, you know, what's, what is everyone talking about? Well, you, you look at the, the news stories, you know, they say perfectly healthy 30 year old dies of COVID. Uh, and then you see the picture of them and it's like, they don't exactly look perfectly healthy. Yeah, not exactly a model of uh, health. Like, de define <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect healthy. and healthy. I think we're, uh, <laughs> I think we have some semantic differences. <laughs> yes, right. So I'm like, this must, this must be uh, related to, you know, uh, obesity. Uh, you know, the, getting sick and dying must have something <laughs> related to uh, being obese and, and dying of this disease. And so I, so I just took a, a real hard look at myself and said, I have to change. I have to change for my, my kids. You know, the, the, my worst nightmare is my, my kids growing up without a dad. And so uh, I, I started getting serious. I started, you know, Googling different things like what's the best book to scientifically change your body? Uh <laughs> And just, just doing a lot of article reading at first. Uh, and I happened to come along, um, you know, the, the series of, of Mike Matthews books. And uh, I guess the, the first book, you know, the, the Bigger Stronger book was, that was kind of, you know, my epiphany that I need to get scientific about the way that I'm treating my body, the way that I'm eating, the way that I'm working out, the, the way that I'm measuring myself. Uh, it was just a, a sort of a, an epiphany that, that I just needed to, to tighten in the, my metrics and, and just get a, make, make it more of a scientific experiment than I was making it. Uh, because really, I mean, what I've been doing my entire life wasn't working and I had never tracked anything. So it is similar to how I came into all of this. I mean, I was, I, I wasn't, uh, I, I was into lifting weights and I was, uh, I was in good shape by anybody's standards, but I, I was not approaching it scientifically at all. And so it was a similar for me. It was more just like, you know, I'm already putting my time into this. I, I'm, I might as well at least try to get more out of it, you know? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Quit spinning our wheels here and then uh, <laughs> try to make some progress and noticeable progress. Yep. Yeah, that, that was certainly kind of the, the first epiphany. The second epiphany was just kind of the, the energy balance realization that... Well, first of all, that I'm eating way too much. When you when you start to you know get yourself to a point where you're actually eating somewhere around you know 2,000, 2,200 calories a day, like man, I'm still hungry. Yeah. What what am I doing wrong here? Am I uh, weighing it wrong, or or was I just eating triple the amount that I should be for my entire life? And it's, <laughs> you know, the latter. I was eating way <laughs> way too much, and I've just gotten used to just stuffing my face constantly, and just didn't have a concept for for meal portion sizes and, and, you know, what was really appropriate for, for an adult to be eating. And so, you know, weighing my food, weighing food, weighing, not just, uh, you know, the, the meat that you're going to cook up, but also the, you know, little snacks in between. I weigh everything. I still to this day weigh all of my food. And people think I'm crazy when I tell them that, but it's like, listen, this is what I have to do. It's sort of like, uh, you know, kind of just a routine that I know that I have to keep myself in or I'll fall off the wagon. Yep. And, and my, you know, grabbing a handful is just different than weighing it. Uh, it might feel the same, but it's not. And, and just, to, just to chime in on, on that, uh, if, if anybody listening hasn't consistently measured and weighed their food for any, I would say, decent amount of time, and, and if, if you, so you've not done that, and you are struggling 
to uh, manipulate your body composition the way you want. If you're struggling to lose weight or lose fat, or maybe you're struggling to gain weight, to gain muscle, and you're fairly certain that your workout programming is good, maybe you're following one of my programs. And it's not to say that my programs are the best possible programs, but they're, they're time proven at this point, and they're, and they're based on solid principles, um, then it's a good exercise to, to do, to Make a make an exact meal plan, decide what you're going to eat and measure the foods. And the reason is, is you will then start to gain more familiarity and more understanding of portion sizes and how different amounts of different foods correlate with different amounts of calories and macronutrients. And given your success net that you've had, Todd, you know, of course, that you could if, if you were taking, you mentioned that this is just what works for you to make sure that you stay on track. However, you certainly have now intellectually grasped what I just explained. You now understand you eat. I'm sure you've, you've, you've measured the foods that you like to eat enough where you have a very good idea of what portion sizes are like, but it sounds like if you give yourself too much latitude, it just tends to turn into overeating uh, too easily. And so you've kept it in simply as a, as a tool for just keeping your calories and macros where you need them to be. And you feel it's not a major imposition. You don't mind doing it. So why not? Am I, am I right there? Yeah. I, I think that psychologically it's, it's probably more of a psychological thing. Yeah, I, I could yeah. measure out my food ahead of time and, but you know, it's, it, it kind of plays into the whole idea of flexible dieting as well. And that I know essentially, you know, where I want my macros to end up. I know essentially how many calories I need to have. And, and then, you know, for, on that point, just this idea of if I have one bad day or if I have, uh, you know, a day that I, I'm really on target, it's really not going to make that much of a difference, right? The, Correct. You, the small trends, small, small changes, small trends, you, you know, you have to have consistency over a long period of time to actually see true change uh, and, and really getting this concept of, you know, okay, well, I can kind of map out where, what I want to eat and, and the food that I'm going to uh, buy at, at the grocery store for the whole week. And then, you know, if, if something comes up and, uh, you know, there's birthday cake, well, I eat the birthday cake, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to ruin my life, but, yep. uh, you know, I can make up for it over the course of seven days and just, you know, be very disciplined the rest of the time. And just to say, I do the same thing. And, you know, my, my job is uh, one of my jobs is to stay in, is stay in really good shape, unnecessarily good shape. If we think about it from any other perspective, right? It's not necessary, not yeah. that I'm super jacked or shredded, but for, for a natural dude, I would say I, I probably am about as, uh, in shape as I could be without causing myself problems. If you, if you get too lean and stay too <laughs> lean, right. For yeah. example, without drugs, you, you just feel terrible all the time, blah, blah, blah. And I'm the same way. I have my meal plan. I like to eat certain foods and I just get into a rhythm of eating those foods, but there will be opportunities just the other day. Um, uh, so I, I moved, I was telling you before we get recorded, I moved to Florida. I'm on a farm now in Florida and I uh, have a couple of horses. It's my wife's thing. Like I don't ride, she rides. And, and there's somebody who helps with the horses and helps with the farm and his mom or his mother-in-law made she she i don't know if she does this uh like as a caterer or i don't i don't think she has a restaurant but she made mexican food like a, a spread of like little tacos and there was i think uh, yeah. i don't I, I don't i'm not familiar enough yeah. with mexican food the good, there were a couple the of stuff. there were yeah, yeah there were a couple <laughs> and she's authentically mexican right flautas or something yeah. yeah yeah i don't i don't i'm not familiar enough to know what, what these different dishes or what, what they were called but but uh rogelio is is the guy who works with us uh he brought it for for, for me and my family to eat. And so instead of eating my salad with chicken for lunch, I had that knowing like what you said, it's just, it just doesn't really matter if these small deviations are totally fine where it becomes an issue. Not that, um, well, let's say that Mexican food, there's nothing wrong with that, but let's say I work or five to six days a week. I were skipping my couple servings of leafy greens to just eat corn tortillas maybe not the best nutritional decision, but so long as you're doing the most important things, mostly right. Most of the time you can afford the, the detours and not only you can afford them, you should enjoy them no matter how yeah. robotic, uh, you, you may be able to be. And I'm one of those people for sure. 
it's still nice to have something that is not on your meal plan now and then, and even to plan in, all right, on Friday night, like I like to have ice cream. That's my, my kind of go-to oh, indulgence. Yeah. So, so once a week, uh, I'll eat a pint and I don't like to eat a little bit of ice cream. That's not, if I'm going to eat ice cream, I want, <laughs> I want to eat the whole pint, right? So once a week <laughs> I'll eat a pint of, uh, Jenny's is the brand is my go-to these days. Delicious. And, uh, they have a, they have quite a few different flavors that are good, but my favorite is gooey butter cake. Uh, I think it's called gooey something cake. And oh it's like their take on milk bars, crack pie they had crack pie ice cream or something which i tried and it's not sure. jenny jenny's just shits on it so I, I tried it once and and that was the end of that um but anyway I've, I've hijacked the conversation but i just wanted to i just wanted to chime in and say that no. that strategy is is it really makes all of this sustainable yeah and you know to that point the diet is is it's been crucial and really you know people say like what's your secret i always say cheating cheating is my secret because i've I actually plan. So, you know, every week we have family dinner night on Friday night. And then, you know, sometimes we do it again on Saturday night. And it's just the time where I get to be with my family. We go out to dinner, we eat out at a restaurant and I, you know, I don't have cauliflower and broccoli and squash and, you know, chicken and whatever else is, you know, ultra healthy that I eat on the regular course of, of the week. Yeah. You're not, yeah. You're not ordering the, uh, tilapia and asparagus with, no, with no, um, yeah, with no, no oil. No. Uh, I just, yeah. Oh man. No, it, we, we go all out. And so the, the plan sheet, I mean, it's just like, I look forward to it and it kind of keeps me in line all week. And that's kind of my secret is that, uh, and it's gotten me through, a lot of the real tough weeks because at first it's tough because you work your ass off, you know, and I could get into kind of the exercise routine a, a little bit, but I did, I was doing some, uh, you know, sometimes two a day that I'd be, you know, waking up early to, to lift in the morning. And then later in the day when it'd cool off, I'd, I'd be going out and doing, you know, 45 minutes of, of uh, hit workout sprinting, uh, kind of, you know, running my ass off in our neighborhood and all the neighbors kind of looking at me weird, you know, and you do that for weeks on end at first, and you just don't see much difference. You don't see much progress. And I think that psychologically, that's why a lot of people drop off because they don't see, they don't get the reward of kind of seeing the results right away. Uh, and when you're as big as I was, you know, it takes a lot to kind of, I, I, I always tell people like, they're asking for like, when do you see difference? It's like, man, you know, I feel like I dropped like five BMI points before I actually started, people actually started noticing. Yep. Right. And that's a lot, yep. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a lot of weight that I had to lose before I actually got the, the gratification of, of, uh, kind of noticing a difference. And, and there were a lot of weeks in there where I was like, man, is this even working? But I read, you know, your book, I, I read, you know, it wasn't the only book. I read a lot of different, uh, materials and, and sort of, you know, come to the conclusion that this is the path that I need to take. And I wasn't going to give up because I always think back to that, you know, the catalyst moment, which was, <laughs> it's either this or you're going to die of COVID in, the, in a hotel room in Seattle, right? You know, so, something's going to get you eventually. If it wasn't COVID, it's going to be a stroke or a heart attack or something that's the result of just being, you know, just in terrible health. So yeah, the cheat meal is awesome. How, I'm, I'm curious, how, how has that been for you? Because it sounds like previously uh, you, you cheat meals were the, the rule, not the exception. And I'm curious because yeah. uh, my experience with it is one of the reasons I like to, to eat that way. I mean, I, I actually do enjoy all of the nutritious stuff that I eat, but there is a different enjoyment that comes from going to the restaurant and just ordering everything you want, um, eating the pint of ice cream, uh, making the huge bowl of pasta. I like to make homemade pasta. That, that, that's something I really enjoy oh, yeah. as well. But the fact that it is the exception, not the rule, makes it a lot more enjoyable than if it were the other way around. But that's oh, yeah. me. Have you, how has that experience been like for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's way more enjoyable. And when you are forced to go out and it's not your cheat day, you do find yourself, I think, at least personally, this is me sticking to the plan a little closer. You know, if, if, if I got, if I, if I have I'm forced to go out on a business meal, that's not on cheat day, it just happens in, in, through the course of life. You know, you, you're going to have to put in, in situations uh, when you're trying to, to be ultra healthy, you know, you're not comfortable in. And, you know, one strategy I've learned is that I like to know where I'm going ahead of time. I like to look at the menu 
And I sort of in my head put together like the healthiest possible meal that I can and sort of, you know, abstractly calculate what I think that the calories are going to be. Yep. If I, if I say, okay, I want to get that salad, but I don't want the dressing. I don't want any dressing. I want you to put the chicken on the side and I need to have as many vegetables as possible, but not, you know, no oils. You know, it's so it's like <laughs> there are strategies around doing that, but th- it's all part of the process and sort of getting used to, you know, living your lifestyle a little bit differently in order to have this, you know, body that uh, you're sort of satisfied with and that you get compliments about and that, you know, it just makes you happy, right? Um, the happiness, you, you start to realize after a while that it's like, yeah, there's, there's uh, uh, I guess, things that you could enjoy more in life. Like I could, I could you know, eat a pint of ice cream every night. Um, but, you know, I did that for 34 years, 35 years, and, and I felt like shit. <laughs> I just don't, you know, I I don't want to live, I I don't want to live that life anymore. Uh, I've made a decision to, uh, to get away from that. And so the cheat meal is sort of like, it's it's sort of like an exodus where I can kind of just relax a little bit, enjoy food that I don't normally have. You know, I think it is extra tasty uh, when when you kind of get, get off of the regular health food train for a little bit. And yeah, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, those sentiments have been echoed to me um, from from many many people I've spoken with over the years who went from uh, yeah consistent overeating and consistently eating way too little nutritious food to this type of lifestyle that that we live in, and a lot of them have been surprised at how much more how much more they enjoy. Uh, that flexible dieting approach where you are getting, if we look at it on a, even on a weekly basis, most of your calories from very nutritious stuff and a minority from not so nutritious stuff, old them would have, oh, yeah. it would have, would have thought that there's no way, you know, it, it just, it just would have been so terrible and, um, and that it's really only for like fitness freaks, you know. If you like what I'm doing here on the podcast and elsewhere, definitely check out my VIP one-on-one coaching service because my team and I have helped people of all ages and circumstances lose fat, build muscle, and get into the best shape of their life faster than they ever thought possible. And we can do the same for you. You know, something that's really strange is before, before, you know, I lost all all the weight and, and gained kind of the the, the muscularity that we, so my wife and I would go to this, this Capitol grill. That's kind of our, our date night splurge is uh, Capitol grill before, you know, I could eat, I could eat a steak and, and lobster mac and cheese and dessert and you know, drink my face off and, and feel just fine afterwards. Now we kind of look forward to the date nights, but a day afterwards, I don't feel very good <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. before. I, I, I guess maybe I wouldn't notice, but like if I stuff my face like that and, and really splurge, Man, you know, I, I really, it, you can kind of feel it inside of you. It's not really sitting so well, right? It tastes good, but, y- you know, your body kind of now recognizes that, yeah, that's not so good. <laughs> yeah, you've upgraded your machinery. You're no longer a, like a Pinto. Now now you're maybe like a Porsche and it, <laughs> it doesn't like the, uh, the, yeah. the 75 <laughs> octane fuel that you just filled it up with. Exactly. No, I've, I've had the same experience, actually. I've, uh, similarly, my quote unquote splurges have become less, uh, less splurgy, have become less decadent just for that reason where when I was younger, I don't know if it was because I was younger. It was just, yeah, it was fun to go to, uh, I, I used to go to Fleming's actually, it's similar to Capital Grill, right? And just eat. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eat, eat uh, yeah, no two sense. or three appetizers and eat a huge steak. Buy everything. Yeah. A huge steak that yeah. is, is probably like by weight, half, half of it is butter at this point. Right. And then the dessert and it was fun until I got home. Then, then I, I just, I didn't feel terrible, but it was, it was the, then the next day, you know, when I, I wasn't even beginning to get hungry until like 2 PM, I was like, okay, that probably tells me something. <laughs> I just ate so, you know, when you eat 7,000 <laughs> yeah. calories right. for dinner, it's a bit, a bit much. 
And so these days, uh, <laughs> I don't need to eat that much. I would say to, to actually enjoy the overall experience more because, you know, you get to a point where you're just, you're not hungry at all anymore. And you don't even, you're not even really getting much satisfaction from, from continuing to eat. You're just eating for the sake of eating at that point. And that's kind of where I draw the line now in terms of diminishing returns of enjoyment is, um, uh, you know, I, I want to, it's nice to enjoy it as the, the enjoyment curve is, is kind of going straight up and then, and then it starts to flatten off. And for me, for example, that's probably around 1500 to 2000 calories of whatever, I'm eating. Um, if it's one food, that'd yeah. be a bit much. If it's ice cream, that's a bit much. Um, probably about again at the half pint mark, I'm like, okay, I could stop, but I just finish it because it's worth it. And there's a thousand calories, 800 calories, whatever a 2000, two pints of ice cream, that second pint, I would just be forcing it down almost. Um, but, <laughs> but for me, that's, that's what I've found is that if I stop there, then I enjoy it. And going further than that doesn't really provide much more enjoyment And of course, when you understand the first principles that we're operating with, is it really necessary to, to just add another 2000 calories, 3000 calories to the surplus for the day? Not really, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I can definitely identify with that, but I guess that on the other side of that, you know, when you do have a, a, you know, catastrophic day and you feel terrible and regret it, one thing that I found is, you know, you're, you're your next day workout and, and maybe even, you know, several uh, subsequent days are, are pretty spectacular. That's true. Right? You just have this <laughs> new focus of, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that for a while and I'm going to get back on the horse and I'm going to kick some ass and, and really make the best uh, out of my time here when I'm, when I'm focusing on, on working out. Uh, and I guess that, that was the other thought that I had was uh, kind of the, the last most important thing that I found about this, this path was that I've changed several times. I've changed the way that I do things several times when I've plateaued. And one, one article that I would kind of point to was, you know, there's, I've, I've plateaued, I think four times in the, I think 80 pounds that I lost, uh, four times that, uh, that I kind of, you know, probably anywhere from one to two months where I just, you know, couldn't lose any weight. I didn't, wasn't seeing any differences in the mirror. And, and I just felt like I wasn't making any more progress. And, but I knew that there was, more to go. I knew there was, there was more progress to make. And so I, I point to an article that you wrote, I don't know when you wrote it, but it was ways back. It's like, listen, it's, it's a simple equation. If, if you're plateauing, you're either not moving enough or you're eating too much. Figure out what it is you need to change and change it. And so it's like, okay, well, I don't want to eat less because I already feel like I'm starving myself. So, you know, wh- what is it that, about my routine that I need to change? And that, that's gone both ways. As I've gotten uh, leaner, I've found that, you know, the types of workouts that I do tend to be either less effective or more effective. One thing that I found is I, I actually did get more lean was that I, I make a lot less progress by doing just so much high intensity interval training. Uh, I, I make a lot more progress when I, when I kind of stick to the weightlifting and, and just really kind of focus on my diet. And, uh, and I feel less fatigued that way just in, in the you know, regular course of the day. Yeah. And, and I have a little more time to myself. You know, and, and when you're kind of at this stage where you're just kind of maintaining, you're not really trying to do anything, you know, just, just, just kind of, you know, don't really, really want to get bigger, don't really want to get smaller, just kind of want to maintain. It, it's like uh, you kind of, uh, you can drop off some of the, the things that you were focusing on before. And, and I think a, a willingness to change has been kind of the, uh, uh, it's, it's been number one for me. Uh, because there have been times where it's like, man, you're, I, mean, I was either not lifting enough or not moving enough or, uh, you know, eating too much or not tracking my calories close enough and, and just being willing, being accepting that, you, you know, the routine that you have might not be the right one, even, you know, regardless of how used to it you are, just that willingness to change, I think, is um, it's been crucial. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, if, if people can sort of accept that, that you know, if something doesn't work, just, you know, try something else for a little while. Try, try a different path and see if you see the results to see results and it's not killing you, then, you know, maybe that'll work. So that, that's one thing that I think that you've uh, sort of written about that's helped me uh, personally that it's been good. Yeah. To that point uh, with high intensity inter- interval training, I was a bigger proponent of it years ago than I am now. At that time, 
there was research that was uh, showing that it was possibly more promising than just being more difficult, just burning more calories in a shorter amount of time, that there may be some unique mechanisms whereby you will just lose fat faster with high intensity interval training uh, than lower intensity cardio that are not simply explained by calorie expenditure. And fast forward to today, and I think the weight of the evidence is clear that that's probably not true and that the primary benefit is just you burn more calories in less time but that depends on how you're doing your high intensity interval training because of course you're burning a lot of calories when you're sprinting not you don't have to be sprinting on the ground of course but let's say you're on a bike and you're doing your sprints but then you have your rest periods where you're not burning many calories so if those sprints are too short and those rest periods are too long the calorie expenditure may even out to it may take a little bit more time but or not it may be like let's say let's say 15 minutes of of high intensity interval training and again the sprints are short the rest periods are long or 15 minutes of lower maybe moderate uh, ish intensity let's give it you know, like a four out of 10, maybe a five out of a t- out of 10, where you could, maybe we wouldn't record a podcast uh, while doing it, but we could be on the phone and we're going to be huffing and puffing and it, but we could still have a conversation about that level of intensity. The calorie expenditure may even out where high intensity interval training will win out is if you are fit enough to have longer sprint periods, not longer than your rest periods per se, but longer, like maybe one-to-one uh, sprint to rest periods. And so now I'm actually, I'm, I'm finishing up uh, a, it's really, it's really a fourth edition of bigger, leaner, stronger. And I'm also going to be applying these changes to thinner, leaner, stronger. And in the cardio section, uh, I'm going to, I explain some of this. And so I'd say my current recommendation on cardio is that it's, it's great to do. And I do recommend including it in your regimen, even if you are mostly just uh, interested in getting bigger and stronger, uh, it has health benefits, but it actually can help improve your performance in your strength training. And I talk about why, and as for a, how to go about it, I recommend that you do most of your cardio. Um, it, it can be higher intensity. It doesn't have to just be walking, although walking is perfectly fine. If, if you understand that it doesn't burn that many calories, it burns more than most people think a few hundred an hour, but it's not the same as hopping on a bike and, and, you know, pedaling around for busting it. Yeah. Yeah. Or or even just at what I was saying, a five out of 10, you're going to, you're going to burn quite a, quite a, you're going to burn those three to 400 calories in 30 minutes. Right. So though, to make most of that cardio low or moderate intensity, and if you want to supplement that regimen with a little bit of high intensity, probably no more than an hour per week, then you can. And there are some reasons to do that. And I'm going to talk about that, but you know, talk about things changing my position has changed whereas previously i was like you know if you're going to do cardio you might as well get you might as well just get the most bang for the buck and yeah a hit is difficult but if you do something that is not high impact like bicycling and you don't have to even go outside to do that not that going outside is bad but it's pretty uh, convenient to just have an upright bike you can hop on and do your sprints and uh and you know maybe 20 minutes a few times a week and you're done Again, I don't think that was bad advice, but uh, the advice that I'm sharing in these updated fourth editions, uh, I think is better. And it's just, it's just better for the crowd that I'm addressing. It's better for people like you and like me who we care about our body composition. We care about being healthy, uh, but we don't care if uh, we can't uh, win the triathlon because you know, our, our sprint yeah, capacity is right. just not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To, to that point. Yeah. I think when I was early on and, you know, 265 pounds, uh, you know, I uh, really moving and doing anything would have helped. Uh, just, just the fact that I was moving was, was a good thing. Uh, and as, uh, you know, I've gotten leaner, it's just that it, the, the approach has changed. And I think that that's, it, it's, it's been, for the best. And I, I think that, you know, I've got more time to, to do other things now instead of just exercise all day, which is uh, a good thing for sure. It's one of the big payoffs of maintenance, of getting to that point where you're just happy with your physique and you're happy with your health. And sure, you want it to improve because 
nothing just stays exactly the same, right? Things are either getting better or worse, even if it's in very small amounts that are not obvious in the day-to-day. So yes, you want things to continue on an upward trajectory, but you are not as concerned with the steepness of that trajectory as you were a year or two ago, you know? Yeah. And and I think that, uh, you know, to the point you made on, uh, you know, just having a different position on things. At first, I remember you, in the first book, you'd mentioned, you know, intermittent fasting, you know, you weren't really a proponent of it. And then this latest book, uh, you're more of a proponent of it, but, you know, for not the same reasons as most people are. And I think, uh, you know, I, as, as I've gotten older and, and kind of moved along the path, I've realized, you know, I'll, I'll try different things out just to, you know, give it, give it a whirl and <laughs> see, see how I, I like it. And, uh, you know, intermittent fasting is one of those things. It's like, you know, it's, when it comes to managing a, a, you know, a weekly calorie, you know, maintenance schedule, intermittent fasting makes it uh, a lot more manageable. You know, you can, you can kind of load up at dinner time more than you, you would otherwise. And that's a great reason to do it. Some people, they just like to eat that way. They're naturally not very hungry in the morning. They don't really care to eat breakfast food. That doesn't mean anything to them. And they like to eat fewer, larger meals, especially if you like to eat your larger meals at night. I'm the same way. I don't follow any kind of intermittent fasting protocol because I do have a a scoop of protein powder and I put a scoop of my green supplement in it and a scoop of my post-workout. I just mix it all together. But I do eat very light so that's a very light breakfast, obviously. And then my lunch is a salad mm-hmm. with some chicken, maybe some other stuff thrown in, uh, depending on if I want to add some variety, but it's pretty light. And then I'll have uh, another protein shake in the afternoon. So again, not too many calories, mostly protein with some vegetables. I'll throw in some fruit here and there as little snacks. Uh, Cause I like to get in about two to three servings of fruit per day, but I prefer to have a bigger dinner. And even, even after dinner, I like to eat some oatmeal with some nuts and some protein powder. So Mm -hmm. I, I I would be the kind of, yeah, I would be the kind of person who would like intermittent fasting if I cared to completely skip breakfast, but I I don't, I I do prefer to have something uh, usually around nine. And I mean, I guess before that, I also, I drink, um, I have a cappuccino that I make, so I'm not going to give up that. I like my, I go outside, I read, I I drink my coffee. (laughs) That alone is not worth it to me (laughs) to to fall in intermittent fasting diet. (laughs) I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. You got to be careful with the caffeine, though. That's uh, <laughs> if you're like me. It's, some people are like a you know a pot of coffee a day kind of guy. Like I can I can really throw it down if I'm not careful. <laughs> so, yeah, I stick with four shots of espresso in the morning, and that's it. Sometimes I will have one scoop of caffeinated uh, pulse, the, the stim stimmed pulse. So that'd be an extra 175 before I go train, but usually not. Uh, It's usually just, um, three to 400, uh, milligrams first thing in the morning. And that's it. Because unfortunately I am a bit sensitive to it. If I have caffeine consistently, uh, in the afternoon, I can get away with it here and there, but if I do it two, three days in a row, it, it starts impacting my sleep, unfortunately. Yep. Same here. And then, you know, you start supplementing with, uh, you know, something to help you sleep. And you're like, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> Do I like caffeine that much? I can just stop drinking as much caffeine. Yeah. And, that, and that's the other thing, supplementation, uh, you know, I think a, a lot of your guidance is pretty good. It's just like, listen, it's, there's no supplement out there that that's going to completely change you. Um, but there's, there's lots of great uh, supplements out there that uh, can certainly enhance uh, what, what you're already doing which I think is uh, another good lesson from a lot of the readings is that there's some good stuff out there that that's proven to work, you know, protein being, <laughs> you know, first and foremost, one of the most important picking good protein and, and just, you know, getting a, on a schedule and, and just monitoring everything. Good stuff. Exactly. Yep. And that, that's never going to change. I'll say uh, if, if it ever does change, no, it just won't. It won't. I mean, look at even as far as body composition goes, the wonder supplement creatine, I don't know if there's ever going to be another. I mean, maybe someday. I don't know of anything on the horizon that shows uh, promise to be the next creatine. Uh, there are some things that yeah. seem to help uh, in similar in similar like bottom line results. Like beta alanine seems to to help you gain muscle faster, regardless of what it does in 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 terms of improving your performance. Not not mechanistically similar to creatine, but the results are similar in that it appears to to just enhance muscle gain again separate to 
uh, enhancing your workout performance, but the effects are are not as uh, significant as creatine. But you look at the the effects of creatine; they are completely insignificant if you compare creatine to testosterone, <laughs> for example. And again, creatine right. is like the gold standard of body comp supplements. And so supplements will always be supplementary by definition. That's just not going to change. Right. I wish it were otherwise as somebody who has a supplement company, but that's just the reality. <laughs> and there's no, there's no, no, <laughs> yeah, no reason to pretend otherwise. Yeah. To that point, I was going to say, yeah, I, I tried some of your, uh, your protein. There is one that's like a fruity cereal. And I'll tell you, it does, it kind of reminds you of like, like liquid fruit loops. So I was like, this is really weird. Like I did a double take on the ingredients. I was like, is this, is this like liquid fruit loops or fruity pebbles? It was so that one, that, yeah, that one's really popular. A lot of people were surprised because uh, we obviously use uh, all natural ingredients and, and flavoring naturally is, is much more difficult and sweetening naturally is much more difficult. And I was impressed with what they did with that. that that's, that's become one of the few flavors that are in my rotation these days. I, I usually have like three or four that I like to switch between and that's one of them. Yep. It's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Awesome, man. Well, hey, this was uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this and definitely keep me posted on your progress going forward. But it sounds like um, it sounds like you've reached you've reached that point, and it sounds like you've reached it some time ago. But it's always fun for me to see people reach that point where the lifestyle that um, I'm I'm promoting is, and it's not just me. Obviously, uh, this is promoted by a lot of people, but but the fitness lifestyle and a healthy balanced fitness lifestyle is just something that you do now where, where somebody they get to that point where they're like i've done this enough i have the habits established and this is just what i do now and you know that you, yeah. you can do that now yeah. for the rest of your life and i'm guessing you've reached that point where you've decided you're never going back to the way it was yep that's 100 percent true People always ask, I mean, getting to that point where, I mean, people stop you on the beach and they're like, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, and, and then they immediately ask for advice. And a lot of times I just, I throw out the Mike Matthews books, you know, I, I just like, listen, you want a good place to start, try these books. Cause it's a, it's where I started and, and, you know, it led me down, you know, Pandora's box. And and now I've, uh, I've just got this, this toolkit of, of, you know, things that I follow and, and it's just, it's, it's ever changing, but it is always the same at the same time. Right. Yeah. It's like the core never changes, right? Because it is these, we're, we're dealing with first principles that don't change, but it's the, the, the trappings, it's the, the window dressing. There are many different ways to set that stuff up, but you now know what simply is non-negotiable, right? Some of the things are negotiable. Some of them are not. Exactly. Yep. And many thanks to you and, and, uh, for doing what you do. Cause I think the, the voice that you have in, in your books and, and kind of the, uh, you know, the, the, the entertainment of reading the books, you know, it's funny here and there. I think that that's what kind of, you know, got me interested and intrigued, you know, to, to spend an entire, uh, flight reading chapter after chapter and kind of delving in and then doing my own research. So kudos to you there. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely something I, I hope to maintain going forward. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate the support. And it's funny. A lot of people say the same thing uh, and that it's easy for them when they get asked for advice. We're like, you know, honestly, just, just go check out this guy's stuff and go check out his blog, search probably any question you have, you're going to find something on it. Um, whereas when I get asked questions, I feel like I can't just say, "Oh, just read my book." As you would just, it, it would come off wrong, right? <laughs> so it's just funny that you know, I, I, I'll get wrapped up in conversations yeah. probably more than 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 you would because I don't want to be rude and say, "Yeah, whatever, just just buy my book. Stop asking me questions." Not that I would say it that way, but that's how it would come <laughs> off, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, you certainly could, and, <laughs> and and they'd probably thank you for it. Yeah, yeah. So. But um, anyway, great job. Thanks again. Keep it up. Thanks so much, man. 
Well, I hope you liked this episode. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, subscribe to the show because it makes sure that you don't miss new episodes. And it also helps me because it increases the rankings of the show a little bit, which of course then makes it a little bit more easily found by other people who may like it just as much as you. And if you didn't like something about this episode or about the show in general, or if you have uh, ideas or suggestions or just feedback to share, shoot me an email, mike at muscleforlife.com, musclefor-life.com, and let me know what I could do better or just uh, what your thoughts are about maybe what you'd like to see me do in the future. I read everything myself. I'm always looking for new ideas and constructive feedback. So thanks again for listening to this episode, and I hope to hear from you soon.